third day of our multi-day severe threat, and we've got plenty of ingredients in play, obviously, to bring us the severe weather that we're seeing right now and that we will continue to see later. So today, best chance of severe weather from parts of Missouri into Illinois, into Kentucky and Tennessee. This includes Metro Nashville and Paducah. So we get into some pretty populated areas here uh, across the uh, Tennessee Valley into the Midwest. A position of upper level winds is producing some increased lift. So we've got that air diverging. That's providing the lift. So that air fills up that void. And those strong upper jet stream winds off to the north and to the south help produce that. We've got that warm front too. And a lot of times we watch for that extra bit of turn around our warm front boundaries. That's also allowing winds out of the south. And what those southerly winds are going to do, bump up the moisture, bump up the warmth. So that increases our available energy across the area. As energy spreads northward, it will feed and fuel thunderstorm development. And we'll see more th potent thunderstorms take over through the second half of today and tonight. Increasing winds aloft with speed will also be turning with height. So that change in direction with height, of course, wind shear, change in wind speed or direction with height is what allows for storms to rotate those tornadoes. So tornado threat increasing this afternoon across sections of Missouri and Illinois. And again, why we've already got one region under that tornado watch could see more with Torcons as high as a five today. We've got a five for Springfield, five for Paducah and a five for Nashville. A lot of three out there, Huntsville, Alabama, Little Rock down towards Dallas, and as far east as Asheville, North Carolina, where we've got some thunderstorms off to your north, Torcon is two, so an isolated risk of a tornado into the mountains of western North Carolina. I know you go, oh, I'm in the mountains, the chances are slim. Not out of the question. Damaging wind threat, though, will be an issue. We saw that with that storm into eastern Tennessee. That thing was warned for 80 mile per hour winds earlier today. Damaging wind gusts likely out of our storms this evening. So we're going to have another complex rolling through. These could be uh, these storms within the complex could be packing quite a wind punch. So be prepared for possible power outages. Have a flashlight, have your cell phones charged, have what you need to keep yourself comfortable through a power outage because I think those numbers will go up. 75 mile an hour or greater winds possible in that white outline zone where I think we see the greatest likelihood of the damaging winds is going to be in parts of Missouri, southern Illinois, western parts of Kentucky, and then north and west parts of Tennessee, again, including Metro Nashville. Threat for one inch or greater diameter hail from Middle Tennessee back into Texas. This includes Dallas. This includes Little Rock and areas inside that white outlined area, two inch or greater diameter hail. So that gets us into that egg size or lime size or larger. So that's the really kind of damaging hail that's going to make a mess of your roof or your vehicle. Afternoon hours. We've got first complex of thunderstorms ro rolling through. You can see it really grows in size. The coverage is going to go way up through the afternoon. So an absolute mess on the radar. Very heavy rain for the late day drive and for your evening hours. So if you've got plans out there this evening, be prepared for just awful road conditions. We get to 11 o'clock. Now our next storm's coming into Asheville, coming into the upstate of South Carolina, North Georgia, northern parts of Alabama. Back into Texas and Arkansas, we've got a complex there. And take a look at this cluster of heavy rain and storms just rolling east through the overnight hours. Going to be absolutely pouring across parts of Tennessee, across parts of North and South Carolina through the overnight hours. And tomorrow morning could be a pretty potent line working towards a place like Atlanta. Mike, morning commute on Thursday. Might be an absolute mess. Yeah, it looks really ugly, doesn't it? 95 quarter tomorrow morning, or really, I guess I should say the 85 quarter. I think a lot of like Atlanta to Greenville up towards Charlotte. That's going to be the active spot for the morning drive. DC, though, you've got some showers to start the day. Greatest likelihood of flash flooding into tomorrow morning, focused into sections of Tennessee and Kentucky. But tomorrow, with our front hanging out around the East Coast, we've got to watch for at least scattered thunderstorms. Some of those could become punchy in areas around and east of D.C. That includes the Delmarva, almost the entire state of Delaware, all the way down through our southeastern states. Likelihood of severe weather back into parts of Texas. This includes Waco, Dallas, that very populated I-35 corridor. So that's an area where severe weather will likely develop. There's our low, and you can see why. So the whole cold front uh, helping to trigger severe weather for the east and southeast, and then our low, of course, just upping the ante across parts of Texas. We got a ton of moisture to work with. No issues out of the Gulf of Mexico. Very high energy for storm development. Again, that includes parts of Texas, the Gulf Coast, getting into the southeast.
southeast. But that upper level disturbance will trigger the thunderstorm development. Again, why there's a little higher likelihood into parts of Texas as opposed to the southeast. But watch tomorrow night as that cluster of thunderstorms that will be on the stronger side continues to move east. Could produce some hail, some gusty winds, and very, very heavy rain. So I think water issues will also be a problem. Threat for one inch or greater diameter hail. I-35 quarter is going to be the spot to mainly watch. Again, that's where you get into the really large stuff, but possible to get severe criteria hail all the way from the mid-Atlantic down through the southeast and Gulf Coast. Flash flooding. I mentioned how heavy the rain is going to be out of this complex or cluster of thunderstorms. I think the best chance will be that eastern Texas to western Alabama quarter. But Mike, any of these storms, especially when we talk about like Atlanta, Charlotte, D.C., where there's a lot of pavement, that's where we could see some water problems just out of a thunderstorm. Yeah, all kinds of urban related areas are really um, urban areas where there's a lot of pavement, that water's standing. So we watched some of those big cities. A Nashville would be a spot to watch here through the rest of today. Rainfall to come. Uh, Paducah could see over an inch. Bowling Green, anywhere from one to three plus inches. So areas could see three, four, five inches of rain between now and tomorrow morning with some of these repeated rounds of thunderstorms moving through these complexes of storms. Flood alerts are posted. We've got flood watches from Cincinnati down into parts of Tennessee. Rainfall over the last seven days. Many areas have exceeded three inches. That's the yellow. The orange is over five inches of rain. So again, grounds are prime. Best chance of flash flooding through tomorrow morning. Areas in yellow. Showing you the north side of town where we've got the storms and the city itself going to get in on some active weather. Virtual view, the rain, the thunderstorms, expect it all as we finish off today and move into tonight. So when we look at the timing for you guys in Nashville, of course, we've got the activity on the north side now. Torcon of five, very likely that we see damaging winds and large hail across the Nashville area, in addition to that chance of some tornadoes. Through tomorrow morning, flash flooding also a likelihood. So the really heavy rain that these storms are going to produce could lead to water problems, will likely lead to water problems, especially downtown where we've just got a lot of pavement, so you get a lot of runoff. This afternoon through the evening, you can see a lot of the activity stays on the north side of town until about mid-evening. Then overnight, things really get going for you guys around Nashville. It's persistent heavy rain, it's thunderstorms, again, hail, gusty winds, perhaps a tornado, all the way into the commute time for your Thursday. St. Louis, a Torcon of three, but a likelihood of damaging winds and large hail there. It'll cause widespread damage across the area, destroying homes and other structures and knocking out power to thousands of people. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer declared a state of emergency for Kalamazoo County. CBS News correspondent Roxana Sabari has the very latest from Hard Hit Portage. Mid-Atlantic all the way down to the southeast. Now, greatest likelihood would be from places like Dallas and Austin, I-35 quarter, but notice Storm Prediction Center has now extended that likely zone through Louisiana, through Mississippi, through Alabama, into Georgia, even the low country of South Carolina. This now includes Montgomery and Jackson and Atlanta, especially the south side. And you know what's on the south side of Atlanta? Hartsfield-Jackson International. So could see some flight issues out there tomorrow, especially when you're dealing with such a major airport getting in on strong storms. Tomorrow evening, there's that cold front, tons of moisture in place. We get the storms going, lots of energy to work with. And this complex, this cluster moves east as we finish off the evening and night. It says 104 is the forecast. The record is 97. That should be an absolute smash. New Orleans, I think you're going to tie your record 91. Orlando, forecast to be near triple digits. 98 would tie the record. Daytona Beach, 96 would break a record. And in Jacksonville, mid-90s for your highs, that's going to put you very close to the daily record. Now, tomorrow, heat risk is present, especially South Texas and parts of Florida. You notice we get into that major heat risk. So this is the kind of heat that's going to take a toll on you, especially if you're spending time outside doing any kind of work. So uh, roofers, those folks who, who might be out working on roads. Things, if you're out there baking in the sun, landscaping, these are the kind of jobs where you got to start to think about the heat stress and what it can do to you. Uh, minor issues all the way up into parts of the Tennessee Valley. Forecast highs, low 90s for uh, New Orleans, upper 80s Houston, but look at parts of Florida, Jacksonville. Again, in the mid 90s, we get those temperatures into the upper 90s for places like Orlando. So you get in the middle part of the state, head to those theme parks, and it's going to be absolutely sweltering in those lines. Late week, 116 million people below average. So 
we will see some changes across the southwest and across the mid-Atlantic, Ohio Valley, and northeast. So in the wake of that front, temperatures dropping for some. Saturday, we do have some below average temperatures, so some changes. But notice uh, a lot of that warmth stays located in Florida and parts of the south. So 5 to 10 degrees below average into the Midwest, into the Northeast. Tomorrow, near average, if not a little bit above average, farther south. Again, we keep those above average temperatures Friday in Florida. But now in the wake of the front, especially across western North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, mountains of West Virginia, western Virginia, and then up into the mid-Atlantic and northeast, Highs will be 10, 15 plus degrees below average. So some noticeable departures. Saturday, again, heat stays in Florida. We've got cooler temperatures across parts of West Texas. We've got cooler temperatures for much of the east. Again, with that front finally moving through. Dew points, they will be uh, dropping farther behind that front. Uh, back into the 50s tomorrow in St. Louis, Nashville. You'll see those dew points drop into the 40s. And even in the wake of the front Friday evening, Atlanta, dew points into the upper 40s. So much drier air. Not going to be one of those days where you walk outside and your hair curls up or, or you start sweating immediately. Raleigh, North Carolina, average high 78, obviously, today. Tomorrow we are above that mark, but that closer to average and drier, Mike, for the end of the week and weekend. All right, Alex, thank you.